is not the only place that toothy monsters are found. Across the United States, there is a predator some call the freshwater barracuda. I was over here and I was swimming. In the summer of 2004, in a lake near Pine River, Minnesota, about 160 miles from Minneapolis, Blaine Johnson was attacked. And after I started swimming, I came in to the shore and then you could see everything in front of you and I was just walking along the shore just seeing if I could see fish. As he waited, bait fish and small bluegills scattered in front of each step. Little did he know that a giant fish was also watching his every move. They saw it coming. I didn't have any idea. But I know that they just scattered. And usually when something scatters, something's up. If I moved my foot up about like that, then it was almost out of the water. The next thing I know, I just got hit. Next thing I know, I'm practically running on water. It took me about three seconds to get to the dock. And all I know is when I got up, there was blood on both sides of my ankle coming down. Blaine never got a good look at the fish as it attacked from behind. The thrashing enemy churned the water to a murky brown as it held fast to his foot. It happens so quick and you're not sure what's going on. There's just one thing in your mind. Get away. Johnson still has the scar wrapped around his foot as evidence. The teeth mark goes up all the way up into here. Both Johnson and wildlife experts believe the most likely culprit is a native fish, the pike. Its torpedo-like body bursts from the weeds, propelled up to speeds of 30 miles per hour. Its many rows of teeth are like razors, eviscerating its prey, and it attacks just about anything that moves. Always when, I, when we hear about them, it's that it's a piece of a person being dangled in the water, much like you dangle a lure or something else. Roland Sigurdsson is an aquatic specialist with the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources and says attacks on people are rare but do happen. They are an ambush predator, they're looking for movement, and they're attacking something that will fit into their mouth, something that they can swallow. Pike are found across the northern hemisphere, and officially, the largest muskie caught with a rod and tackle was 67 pounds and just over 60 inches. Roughly the same size as the largest saltwater barracuda. The pike also resembles its saltwater brethren in ferocity. The two largest pike are found in Minnesota, where Johnson was attacked. The northern pike with its horizontal patches, and the larger muskellunge, or muskie, with its vertical markings. Whatever it was, it was not afraid of them. There was blood. Uh, you know, that's all I know for sure. There was blood and teeth marks. Some of those teeth were, were good size. Maybe it was hungry. Maybe, you know, just saw ankle and decided, hey, let's go for it. According to Sigurdsson, even a small pike will attack. It was very hungry and it, it took a chance on something it saw dangling in the water and turned out unfortunately it was this young man. The pike's aggressive nature seems to have no limits, including attacking its own kind. It is not known whether the smaller pike in this video was attacked for crossing an unknown boundary or if it was an intended meal. It is proof, however, of the ruthless nature of these toothy monsters. When I first saw it, I thought, well, that's got to be like a wolf or some, something big. In October of 1998, these jaws of a dead muskie were found on an island beach in the Chippewa Flowage in Wisconsin, about 300 miles from Green Bay. The Wohler family were vacationing here when they came upon a carcass on the beach. Teeth just seemed so much longer than any other thing I'd ever seen. Just amazed at the size. There was enough of the carcass remaining to identify the monster. Turns out it was a muskie jaw. The jaws have been displayed in a case at the Treeland Resort for the last decade. The question is, how big was this specimen? And was it big enough to attack a man? It could be anywhere from a really nice fish that's 
still probably the fish of a lifetime for a normal fisherman, on up to close to or maybe even commensurate with the world record. There may be a way to determine the size. When you look at the, the thickness of, of this jaw, and you compare it to the thickness of, of a replica like a 52 would be, you can see that it, it's probably a good inch and a half to two inches wider than the head on a 52. And it's also a good inch and a half to two inches longer from where the hinge is actually on the fish. You know, so this tells me that this is, this is a huge fish. Matt Yurnitich is a wildlife forensic reconstructionist for artistic anglers in Duluth, Minnesota. He has mounted many monster muskies in the last 15 years. But nothing compares with this. It's, it's truly a monster fish. I don't think I've ever seen a fish this big. Look how big his teeth are. <laughs> that would leave a mark. Imagine that swimming around in the lake. Heads are pretty much proportional to the body on, on muskies. Well, if you make the head bigger, you've got to make the body bigger. It will take approximately six weeks to complete the full body. And the results could be amazing. Wisconsin is not the only place. And what about the pike jaws found in northern Wisconsin in 1998? Did they come from the largest pike ever recorded? Matt Yurnatich's reconstruction is finished. We made the world record muskie at one time, um, and it was similar in size to what this was. And we did that from measurements we were given at the time. This one just was just a, a hair on the, on the bigger side. If your Natich's estimates are correct, these jaws came from a muskie that was just over six feet long and roughly 70 pounds, over twice the size of the pike that attacked Blaine Johnson in 2005 and likely larger than the world record muskie. It is hard to know a real monster is lurking and waiting to be discovered, just like the monster pike found in the waters of Wisconsin.